One may expect that the ratio of this term to this term is typically given by this length number. I note here q prime. My question is, is this equal, these two are equal to each other? That is this one. I define here this term as the number local. This may depend on position. So I put here local. The question is, Thank you. 
some human destination under periodic boundary condition <coughs> called book turbulence. It is homogeneous, nearly homogeneous and uh, isotropic. And no over UL is about in the data I'm going to show in the following. This length number is about 5,000. So, in order to keep you awake, let me ask you how do you expect? Uh, can you guess the average of this, this number? This is, say, 5,000. Then the question is this one. Or how large or small is this one? It's all the unit. Unit? OK, let me. Because, well, because the disk is, I mean, the, the interpretation of this, uh, there's something strange with, with this interpretation. Okay. Because, okay. because the okay. disk so, is, there are two different So I will, I will call for your vote. Uh, yeah. Please raise your hand if you see yeah. it. I will ask you. I guess. I'm confused already. When you say convection zone, you mean advection. It's u dot rad u. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Non or advection, same. So, thousand? No. Just four. Mm -hmm. Five options. So for, what, for the average value or for the maximum? Average, average. 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 To take some guess mm -hmm. Is anybody who think this estimate? So, but let me ask you, you just calculate locally, directly the magnitude of the viscous storm? Yes, 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 yes. And yes. then you take the average. Uh, and then you take volume. the ratio, then you take the average. Yes, yes. yes. So, my question is how to do estimate uh, guess this magnitude? Is there only so I know, <laughs> not that one. I mean, I think if you average ah, this, okay. if you average this over a length scale, which is the dissipation range, then you should get unity. Then I agree. Just, just I measure this, yeah, this quantity at every point yeah. and take the ratio and take the average over the volume. And the simulation is well before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So assume that, yes. Theoretically, should be one. Okay. Theoretically. Okay. We have only seven, that's the lowest, yeah? This is one. This one? According to you, this is one. Or maybe just point one. Yeah, you'd say less than one, point one. Point one? Okay. Nobody. How about this? I would take thousand. Thousand? Yeah. Thousand. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hundred? Ten, 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 two, one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'll show you the answer. Yeah. Simple dimensional argument, and then it is shown this 
scales like this. So the estimate you will take also, so you are right. Two. <laughs> and uh, this figure shows the uh, distribution of entropy. I call this entropy, and this is proportional dispersion, and over uh, some frame section. So this signal shows you that the distribution of these quantities is very intermittent. In some range, there is some very quiet region, and here very sharp uh, intense. And in the following I call this high intense region as active, and small region non-active. Then the question is, uh, are the red number, local red number, uh, different in this range and this range? That is the influence of activity. And this shows you the key there for a given entropy. This is, for example, this line gives the PDF for a given entropy. And this is in the DNS field, following a base of dynamics. This is just random. And comparing this, you can observe that in random fields, uh, the black line is uh, average for a given problem, and the changing entropy. In the Navier-Stokes field, this line is almost flat. That means uh, the red number, local red number, is almost independent of the activity. But in random fields, it increases with activity. Activity here I call uh, it is given the entropy. So comparing this. There is no increase in its activity in contrast to random fields. This suggests that in the Navier-Stokes field, local <coughs> place number does not increase its entropy. This, ah, sorry, this, this is joint key here for giving entropy and local place number. And if we look more closely each time, this term and this term and the ratio. That is, with the increase of entropy or activity, both nonlinearity and nonlinear term and this dispersion increase. But in random field, this doesn't increase. So the effect uh, the this ratio, the number, is almost independent as the result of this. And then we get this result. And all the you, you had a theory for uh, the mean value. Yeah. Is there also a theory for the uh, dispersion? Perhaps the variance. Yes. Yes. Uh, dispersion, perhaps. Uh, it's not difficult to measure the dispersion, to conjecture. Here is a conclusion of part one. A hypothesis, the nature of turbulence dislikes too high or a local number, i.e., that is, too much ambulance between nonlinear and discrete terms. It's not thousand, it is almost uh, 50 or 10 or so. And now this dynamics works against such a state so that strong small AD structure are so organized to suppress local red number by, for example, uh, instability. So, conclusion is that this doesn't increase and this is about 30 or 40. This is uh, a conclusion of section one. So Did you actually test I mean, this is uh, the square root scaling at square root of the Taylor Reynolds number. But did you test it for different Taylor Reynolds numbers also that it actually gave you that kind of scaling? Or? Sorry, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> but is it the argument, I guess, uh, 
Can you just say what your simulations, what, the DNS, what was the uh, resolution of the okay. We have performed a series of DNS, Equilibrium range. 
this, this is the key assumption for the validity of K41 or universality. But in reality, in any real cardinals in DNS or laboratory or observation, the number cannot be infinite. And the ratio <coughs> L Z this one. This is real continuous lane. And if this is if the scale is much less than this one, we can expect universality according to K41. But this cannot be finite in any real terms. So the question is, what the influence of this non-infinite fact? And so, another concern is that it is widely believed that if there is any universality, it appears in the scaling. Scaling means, for example, if you measure velocity difference at this point, this is distance r, this is ux, this is ux plus r, then you measure and then you may be interested in this is called a scaling exponent and here are some, some constants Computational vacuum, anyway, any measurement may then you can get something like that. This is called structure function. And from this you may guess some slope or some scaling exponent. But in reality the fit cannot be perfect <coughs> in any turbulence because of any this limitation. But what we used to expect in the uh, universality of this one? And theoretically, perhaps this cannot be. I am not sure. I think this is important because, for example, if, you, if I may take an analogy. If you are interested in some R dependence of, say, electric potential or some potential, your potential, then at, at some at distance, you may expand this. The quotient C1, C2 may depend on distribution below, here is some charge, and if you are measuring the potential at a large distance, then the coefficient may be dependent on real distribution or boundary condition. Maybe here is some contact So, C1, C2 cannot be universal, but this is exponent ah, here, some Function depending on theta phi. This exponent is determined by this operator. So we hope this may be universal. But this may not be universal. So people have much uh, attention to this scale. And many measurements have been made, uh, done regarding this exponent. And always we have this kind of curve. And we always observe some deviation from some free scale. Then one asks difference from some scale is due to this one infinity or some genuine dynamics. It's not known a priori. And by the way, K41 also assumes the universality in local vacuum range is isotropic and stationary and equilibrium. But again, in reality, there are many norms. Norms. Non isotropy, non stationarity, non homogeneity, non equilibrium. Yes. K fourteen doesn't assume equilibrium. <laughs> but it is local universal equilibrium state. 
What do you mean by equilibrium? Equilibrium typically means you have I'll a see, I can Gibbs measure. Yes. And by the way, this question is not original. Of course, many people mentioned the question. For example, Kreitman said the chromosome theories have profoundly shaped the illuminated thinking about turbulence. But in one respect, this influence has been unfortunate. Relatively little attention has been developed to the prediction of turbulence statistics at finite resonance. And moreover, it is let's skip. And also Bachelor wrote as follows. The theory is an asymptotic one and its predictions hold with increasing accuracy if the theory is correct. As are the number and the infinity. But no theoretical estimate has been made of the actual value of a lambda needed for a given degree of accuracy. So, in the following, I will talk about <coughs> so called Colmore's four fifths law to get some idea on this question. How large a lambda need be for some accuracy? That is in the limit of large length number and this ratio, this is expected to hold rigorously. This law is very unique or unique or rare in the sense that as far as I know, there is no other laws as rigorous as this one with non-trivial nonlinearity. This is very unique law. And under certain condition, this is exact as I will show you. Under the assumption of homogeneity and isotropy, we have this equation called Kalman Hauer's equation. This is exact. Again, under the assumption of homogeneity and isotropy. Under these two assumptions, this is exact. And this kind of situation is very rare, and very unique. And if we consider R in this range, much larger than this cast range and much smaller than energy counting range, then if R is much larger than eta, we may neglect, hopefully we neglect this viscous term. This term comes from uh, uh, term. And this term is zero if the turbulence is equilibrium. But in reality, even if we are in our DNS, we supply energy to keep the energy almost time independent. But that is, energy is time independent in our DNS. However, small scale always fluctuates. So, Regularly speaking, this is not zero, as I will show you later. But if this is equilibrium and at a small scale, only at small scale, if we neglect can make neglect this one, then this we may forget this one. And also, if the forcing is only at large scale, then in this range we may ignore this part. So, we obtain this relation. So, in this limit, we assume this is exact. And, again, homogeneity and isotropic. But, assume. So, if we ignore these terms. And, analytically, this can be estimated vigorously, but, for simplicity, let's check the smallness of these three terms by the end zeta. Sorry. And first, let me show you the observed, that is, according to the four-fifths law, this ratio must be 0.8. And this is R, normalized by L. And R, as you can see, 
there is no range where this is flat as predicted by the four fixed law, even at the highest level number. But this peak approaches to four eight, four four fifths, and the range of the flat range increase with the number. So we may hope that with increase of red number, this gap becomes small and small, and this range becomes larger and larger. And by the way, these are the DNS data. And this black line is a simple theory based on some simple theory. And this is another side. This is the same data. Ah. Here is some trick. This is in your scale. If you plot this in the one speak scale, the impressions are different. It's not like very flat. But this is the one speak scale. Anyway, with the increase, this is a, a lambda. With the increase of a lambda, this becomes very close and the flat range increases. This is in your space. This is wave number space. Let's forget this. What I wish to say here is that there is only in some range of R measured by data, it is about 100 or so. Sorry. When you plot DLLL, do you actually take the modulus first and then do the average or there is no modulus here? Modulus or what? I mean, you are not plotting modulus no, no, of modulus. delta U. Okay. Just measure and uh, divide by epsilon R. The black lines are based on very simple estimates. And we can, from this, that is, according to the k 40 r 4 fifth law, this must be zero. But because of this custom and forcing term, this is not zero. So this may be a measure of the influence of non-infinity of red number. And according to this estimate, the gap between the data and the four fifths increase is this power. And this is measurement by experiment and DNS. And this is for a forced thousands. This is decay in thousands. This curve shows that in decaying permanence, we need much higher than number to realize the four-fifths law. That is, for example, if you wish to yes. this smallness, then maybe ten uh, thousand may be enough. But if you require this smallness, then you need about fifty thousand of them. Ah, shall some some detailed algebra may be not very important, but just look this one. That is, if we request that this discrepancy is smaller than some critical value delta, then in force turbulence, the range that, such, that, that is suppose this condition is satisfied in this range, then this ratio, that is, that. here is some data. And if we request this difference, delta must be less than delta, then this is our <coughs> and this is our max. The interval, this one, Increase with delta with four fifths, and this is nine four. So, in the this range shrink with much faster with delta than 
in four stadium. So in this sense also uh, realizing office low range or in a sub range is more difficult in decaying turbulence than for stadium. So if you wish to observe in a sub range, I recommend you to put some forcing term in DNS. Without forcing term, the inner sub, sub range may be very narrow. So I, in experiments also, <coughs> to simulate or to realize by experiments some inner sub range, it's better to use force turbulence. Anyway, uh, now, here, we <coughs> assume the smallness of non stationary term, but this shows you the influence of non stationary term. This is a forcing term. No, this is viscous term. Sorry. This I call viscous term. This is non stationary term. This is forcing term. We measure the influence of these terms separately. And this is discussed term as expected with the increase of scale, the discussed term decreases algebraically. And the influence of forcing term decreases algebraically with decrease of R. But this is non stationary term. So non stationary term is small. <coughs> but not very small. And this uh, kalman hauer equation is derived on the basis of the assumption of isotropy. Isotropy means, for example, you, if you measure uh, velocity difference in this direction or in this direction or in this direction. One, two, three. Whichever direction you choose, they are same. It's assumed in isotropy. But in our DNS, it is almost isotropic. However, even at small scale. So if we measure this one, this is in direction one, if I equal one, one, two, three, this must be zero in isotropy. You will see as a turbulence, but in reality this is not zero. And this becomes smaller with a decrease or R, but again, not very small. That is the anisotropy, that is non-isotropy decrease with scale, but not very small. So conclusion number two. There are several norms which may influence or contaminate or pollute the nominal inertia subredge statics, such as the statics means scaling or intermittent correction, etc. And the influence which may vanish at infinite number should not be confused with genuine intermittent effect which remains at finite infinite real number. That is, we are living uh, in on the earth, not in the heaven. So nothing can be infinite. Everything must be finite. So within our limitation of DNS and laboratory experiment, everything must be finite. So there are always some difference of knowing infinity. I ask how you force your DNS. Yes, thank you. <laughs> we used the uh, Fourier spectral method in Fourier space. Is uh, the for k is about that is, for example, in the last computation, the k max is about uh, 
thousand, and we post only at uh, about point four or so. Much. So the forcing is confined at very small web number. That is very large number. But in, including all in this range? I think all in yeah from zero to twenty five or zero to two thousand. No, I mean this the forcing range. Forcing range is which, which wave numbers are there really? Yeah, what's the distribution of the forcing wave numbers in this domain? It is following this one. And what that? This is a velocity, so-called velocity. Uh, oh. uh, so but, uh, negative viscosity. But this is prescribed velocity there. Yeah. This is... What is this you, you, you had? You had the... Uh, it's the same. So yes, it's not the forcing. Same, same, same. It's not the forcing. No, no. It's the It's not the forcing. No, no, no. no. Uh, in, it's not an uncorrelated force. It's a so-called so, so of uh, negative viscosity. Da damping, but with another sign. Well, I would not call it a force. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That is, uh, by this one, we can keep the total energy time independent. And this is a slowly varying time. It's a forcing in the sense that it injects energy. Anyway, uh, this is of course very artificial, and the assumption behind this DNS is that we are interested in small scale statistics and rigorous uh, exact or detailed information on large scale may be not important. Just for keeping energy constant. The F term has uh, another K dependence for the energy, right? Because you don't do this in high wave numbers, it must be a delta. This kind of forcing you will actually not get the exact kalman hoff relation you were writing down. No. At large scale, but this is not exact because this already assumes uh, isotropy. But it's not difficult to generalize this in this case. And it can be shown this inference is in fact very small. That is that decrease with I forgot depending on the what the type you are looking the influence of force the, this term this term decays algebraically with in power of this function L is kc And in our DNS, data over L, mm -hmm. data over L is about thousand or two thousand, very large. And in fact, <coughs> the influence of the forcing time decays with R. This is the influence of the forcing time. This is this facade. And in a sub-range is 
that is expected to exist in this Now, two people are sleeping, but <laughs> let me go south of this. Normal quality in energy transfer. Again, this question is closely related to K41 picture. Again, we are interested in universality in small scale. <coughs> Very simple speaking, K41 uh, uh, takes the following picture. Now, by binary condition of forcing, some large eddies are generated. Then, by nonlinear interaction, large eddy give rise to small eddies. And then, again, by nonlinear interaction, small eddies. Then, this is called cas energy cascade. That is energy is transferred from large to small and then smaller and smaller. In a sense, a uh, stepwise. Then, this may be called generation. This is a father, son, grandson, etc. And if there are, if the separation, here is scale L. And here, this special length and scale. If L is much larger than eta, then the cascade, the number of cascade generation is so large. So, if we are interested in the statics of this range, then the detailed information of forcing or boundary condition, etc., may not be important. The information here may be lost in some sense. At least the detail is not important for the statics here. It is a basic underlying assumption of K41. In that, in this they assume the state of this statistics, this state is not determined directly this range. Suppose uh, there is a very uh, strong grandfather, and suppose you are grandson. You may be most inter uh, influenced by your father, not grandson. This is distant. This is local in scale space. The interaction local or distant. So in Q41, it is assumed that this local interaction is dominant. This is one of the basic assumptions in K41, in my understanding. So the question is, is it true that it's non-locality? It's not important according to K41. That is, distant interaction is not so important. It is believed non-local interaction or distant interaction is not important. But again, I'd like to confirm that some preliminary must be needed. This is not intoxication. And so-called wind rules are so-called filtering. This is grid scale or coarse grain field. This is sub-grid scale or in a small scale in time or space, etc. Anyway, for simplicity, I assume only this is uh, cross-planning only in space. This is a uh, grid scale or cross plane this is sub-grid scale. And we can define by uh, filtering by some operator. Here I use so-called spectral cut filter. That is, 
to remove all the high web number components. Then, operating the filter P mm. on this equation, we can obtain this equation. This is very similar to the well-known Lenin's average. And we get here so-called, <coughs> sorry, I don't know them. This is very similar to Lenin's stress. This time. This comes from the course of uh, nonlinear interaction. Commutation. Commutation. In fluid mechanics, uh, this is the norm. If bar means average, but here bar means filtering, only a cost length thing. And then from this we can estimate uh, the time change of this uh, so called uh, grid scale energy. Grid scale energy obey this situation. And here appears T. And if we construct equation of a small scale <coughs> energy, then the small scale energy indication we have here uh, plus T. That means T can be interpreted as a energy transfer from large to small scales. Large means uh, a large defined by this thing, that is Some spectra cut off. Okay, see. This is grid scale and this is sub grid scale. This is a small scale. This is large scale. And energy is transferred from large to small. It's T. So this is called in the following as energy transfer. T depends on cut off grid number KC as well as position. T depends on KC because the filtering depends on KC. And tau is this one, so called Lenz stress light structure. And here, S is a strain, rate of strain tensor of a coarse blend field. And according to K41, as I said, local interaction coming up. And Ah, this is details. That is, Navier's specification is kind of order nonlinearity in the web vector. So, in the web vector space, this nonlinearity may result in this kind of computer sum. Whatever representation you use, because of the correct nonlinearity, there is always triad interaction. That is, if if you use free spectral representation, then uh, this constraint that is called triad interaction. That is. P plus two equal K. And not such relation. Always three vector, the vector are uh, involved. Not from one to one. Always two generate one. So it is always triad. So the situation is not so simple as like this one. So we have to define the localness or non localness. That is that is, the red thread interaction looks like this. Uh, we can define the localness by this relation. Intuitively speaking, if all the three web vectors are of similar size, then this is called local interaction. And if one is much smaller than the others, then this is called uh, distant interaction. And alpha is a measure of the localness of interaction of the three web vectors. And we are uh, sorry, taking volume average of T, we can measure, we can define this kind of uh, so called uh, anyway. This can be expressed in terms of the integral of alpha of this form. And if we assume distant interaction is dominant 
Yeah, for example, if this is large scale, and this is small scale, and then nonlinear time looks like this one, uh, then this is coupling between large and small. This is uh, coupling between similar size. And if we may neglect local interaction, then this can be dropped. And then this gives you so-called uh, RDT-like attribution. But if local interaction is dominant, this is to be dropped. And then this, this is genuine nonlinear dynamics. And this is what K41 assumes. So it's the opposite to RDT unit. RDT is a rapid distortion theory. Sorry, time is coming. And we measured long, long ago about the uh, localness. That is, <coughs> which is dominant, this one or this distance. And uh, by some measurement, the, this is this is a DNS data. And this is a prediction by some closure. And the integral, this one, is shown to be converged. That this interaction decreases sufficiently fast with the increase of alpha. So the dominant contribution to this transfer comes from alpha approximately 2. That is, uh, if you consider energy at mode k, then this and this couple and to give the energy, this one, is what this curve means. Anyway, a little complicated algebra. Theoretically, it is shown that phi alpha reduces this power. And this here is given by closure, but also uh, I heard from Peter Constantin that this bound can be, this exponent is proved uh, rigorously mathematically. Uh, let's skip this. And this is a PDF of transfer function T. Uh, for various cutoff web number. And the red one is PDF of energy dissipation. Energy dissipation must be positive definite. So the PDF is only non zero at epsilon zero are, are positive. But here transfer can be negative. This can be shown more clearly. Sorry. Uh, by the way, this oh, let's skip. Uh, no. This is PDF of uh, this patient. This is very close to log normal. And log normal is notorious that it's, it, it's not logically consistent. But in reality, log normal fits very well to the DNS data. And here, there are three data. This is for cutoff range number to energy contained range, inertia sub range, dispersion range. And the average is this one, but there are large probability of backscatter. Backscatter means from small scale to large scale. And if this is positive, t, if t is positive, sorry, this is t. If t is positive, it is energy transfer from large to small scale. And this is a forward scatter, this is back scatter. And there are very large deviation. This is so-called uh, large deviation phenomena in any cutoff. And to understand intuitively why there is so such uh, large deviation, maybe an idea can be obtained by this here. This shows, as I showed you previously, this is a uh, energy uh, distribution by energy dissipation and uh, this is entropy in, on a plane. And here it is an uh, integral in scale, large L. That is, this is 
active region, but they are very large structure and very sharp boundary. So very large scale and small scale coexist. So this may suggest that not only local interaction, but also some large, no, distant interaction may join to the game. And another data is, uh, this is uh, velocity dispersion along a line in DNS. This is, uh, this is X, this is a uh, velocity component in particular to the line. So, uh, here, here is very big jump of order V is normalized by large U or fracturing velocity. So here is very big jump with very narrow region. Large scale and very small scale exist. So, uh, is there a two questions? Why here is so large? probability of backscatter and large deviation and also uh, that is sorry that is theoretically and from our analysis to explain this average this average after taking average this in kind is dominated by small alpha, that is, for this average, uh, local interaction is dominant. However, if we remove this average and observe T itself, fluctuating T, then distant interaction may be important. Is uh, uh, my question as well as our concern, and we are now trying to understand this kind of big jump or coexistence of small scale and large structures is progression of the very and our queries. And uh, perhaps a uh, conclusion. <coughs> the average of energy transfer is dominated by local interaction, but this doesn't mean that large deviation statics is also dominated by local interaction. <coughs> Local interaction may be important, non-local. And uh, I, if, next topic, but here, I have a, so, a, a uh, question there on yes. this early part. You said you, you computed the average value at, but it came close to two, so it sort of fits with the picture that one big eddy breaks up into yes, two, yes, which yes, are half yes, the yes, size, yes, right? Yes, yes, but yes. it was not quite two, it was like two point something, yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was yes. about larger than two. Thank you. But uh, yeah. any, any guess to why it would be larger than two? That is not. Or yeah, maybe I And I feel this kind of picture is very good <coughs> for getting intuition, but there is not such an eddy in reality. Not, the eddies are not uh, approved. It's like a banana. That is. By nonlinear dynamics, it may this direction may increase and this may increase. Then, but preferably two is most dominant, so it's a fit to our intuition. But if one consider real eddies, no eddies can be approved. So the definition of scale may be a little. You mentioned the, the log normality also there. But what I didn't catch you what normality you were actually. That is, that is we measure transfer, but in addition to the measuring of T, we also measure dispersion, energy dispersion. And energy dispersion looks like this one. But this is linear scaling. If we take long scale, then the same data give you this impression. This is, after taking a law, it is looks like this. That is, epsilon must be put to one minute. And, perhaps, for honesty, yeah, I skipped 
I showed only this one, but stick to this one. This is a little complicated, so I just there are some trick here. I post process the data to remove this part. I'm a little complicated. This data was not published because of this puzzle. There are some digitization again, but skip. There are some details. And so time is coming. Thank you. I'll <laughs> skip that <laughs> for questions, comments. Yeah, I'm coming back to the first test. Assuming that there is no, if we would assume that there is no intermittent small scale, then uh, wouldn't the ratio of the mean would, would be equal to you? Or the, it doesn't mean or what? Yeah. The, the ratio, the first question you asked. Uh -huh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's a trick here, it, it should be, you should be able to sort that. So it, if you would assume that there was no intermittence at all, no small scale. No small scale? Yeah. No small scale intermittence. I mean, uh -huh. we know no in scale. turbulence that yeah, yeah. there is an yeah. intermit that we have really yeah. small scale intermittence. But the dissipation is extremely, extremely intermittent. But if we would take the opposite view of K41 more or less, that this intermittence is not very important, wouldn't we get the result that, yeah. that Again. we Again. have? Yeah. Assuming uh, K41 yeah. and assume that this is, is dominated by large scale component and this is small scale component. And if it, this is uh, this is small scale and super onion based on K41, ignoring any intermittency, small scale statics should be always dominated by one each side. And this one is large scale, so this is large scale. Then that's all. Then you cannot escape from that estimate. That is, small statistics according to K41. Any small statics is determined by only these two parameters. That's all. This is small scale. This is small scale. This is large scale. And small scale is determined only by this parameter. That's all. Yeah, but you can, the first term, the objective term, you can take as the derivative of these. Yeah, the derivative is small scale. Yeah, but if this is large scale. scale. Yeah. But you can rewrite it as the derivative of u square is there. But again, okay. yes. <laughs> or yeah, this negative. can be written u cross omega yeah. plus some gradient tau. Again, this is for square, this is yeah. square. Okay, then I agree. So it's not quite obvious that you would estimate that term uh, in terms of the common chorus, one of the common chorus, it could be a URMS over lambda that you would actually keep yeah. the micro scale that you would estimate the average of the UVA. In fact, in fact, this gives you 10, but the measurement is about 40. And more, there are some distribution. This is PDF.
time you can estimate it by actually assuming that you have current federation in every kind of time scale. Aha. Right? In the NS? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That should give you an estimate of this quantity, right? Yes. In the NS, we have to take care of at least two time scales yes. for properly advancing. Yes. Why is it stopping from the significant condition? Yes, exactly. Using this, you can actually define some kind yes. of mesh yes. 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 So, this can be taken into account, in, especially in channel simulation. Yes, what I mean is, how is your local Reynolds number related to the mesh Reynolds number? I don't remember, but there is some estimate. Something. Sorry, I don't know. Anyway, we have to choose a uh, stepping to satisfy a uh, smallness of one of these two times. Mm -hmm. I mean, coming back to this issue, if you weighted uh, this average with the local velocity, uh, that is the uh, nonlinear term you weighted with u, and you weighted the diffusion term with u, then of course you get the balance of the then you get the energy transfer. 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 Yeah, the right hand term is yeah. epsilon, and the nonlinear term is actually in that case even zero in the bottom average. Yes. For the little box. Yes. And so you have to balance against the bottom end. But you take the local, the magnitude of the value. I took. Volume average is zero, but your local average, local ensemble average will not be zero. If we remove the, this same average, it must be zero due to the moment of the Yes, right. Mm -hmm. sure. But the number must be positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I took. Yeah. And we have a question about the anisotropy on the box scale. That is, of course, a particular. Uh, it's not exact. It is an anisotropy in this respect to bring two tensors, but. Not higher ones. So is that could that affect? No, because of this particular geometry, mm -hmm. the field cannot to be isotopic in a liberal sense. Yes. Because of this geometry, right. at large scale, yes. it cannot be. But and roughly uh, isotopic. And that, um, has there been some study how far into the inertial range that can actually affect things? Yes. One, one study was <coughs> that I showed. You. Function that is D2 and D3, uh, S2 and S3. This is so called uh, uh, long tilde <coughs> structure function, the transversal structure function, which is two kind of structure function. And if in this direction, in this direction. So we can compare longitudinal and transversing. Not only that, but also the dependence of this one, the direction dependence. Uh -huh. okay. yeah. In isotopic turbulence, this must be the same. Yes. Right. But <coughs> this is along the x direction. This is. Uh, There are three lines depending on the direction. They are not equal. But the difference decreases with scale. But very slow. Looks like algebraic. And apart from no, there is no theory to predict this exponent. This is close to something to start. For example, the I mean you find in your Big simulations, a, a quite a strong correction to the Kronborough slope of 0.1. Yeah. Is that, uh, can that be explained by that? Uh, I don't know. What? Hopefully not. Why not? 
If it is, then we are losing the intermediacy correction. But you know, the intermediacy correction is should be zero point zero three. You should find the shear back and measurement of cost, not zero point one. Zero point one is too much. This is a story. Up to this level, the compensated energy spectra looks like this. If we put data, this is two five six five one two. Then the flat range increased with the increase of resolution. But then we further increased this one. Come like right this one and again this one. So the deviation increased with the resolution. However, according to experiments and observation by Tsuji san, he, he guessed that if, if we further increase the number, then it was like this. And this tendency is in accordance with his observation. Mm -hmm. That is, one guess is that with further increasing the number, this tends again. Yeah. So yes. that is the question. The, the number is always finite. And if we observe some discrepancy between some theory and uh, observation, for example, this slope, is it due to the finite of the number or genuine intermittent correction? At least because we have some bigger theory for a third order moment. This is, in a sense, rigorous. And the deviation of this prediction can be regarded as the uh, inference of non infinity of the number. And for example, So it says this is a scale, and maybe we measure the scaling is not exactly, uh, this is not flat. So one may say, oh, here it is some collection, scaling collection, but it is in a sense false. And if you assume skewness of delta u, that almost in, uh, independent of R, skewness is self-similar, then you can get rho. This is K minus 4 pi sub rho for energy spectra. So uh, then, if this doesn't follow this scale, it's not surprising that this does not uh, follow this scale. The discrepancy between theory and observation may be due to the finiteness of finiteness of the number. That is non infinity in my terminal. There can be finiteness of the large number. There can be because of the isotropy coming from the ball. Yes, there are many reasons, possible reasons. And even if the energy is kept constant, the small scale are like pumping. And as I said, there is some regular theory for this scale. But as far as I know, there is no theory for this two third or minus five third row. No theory. Mm -hmm. No regular theory. There are many theories, but no regular theory. Mm -hmm. This, in a sense, this is very exceptional. That is, we <coughs> have very <coughs> big theory for P equals three. This is very exceptional. Yeah. Only three uh, for P equals three. Third order moment, we have some theory. Second, for any other exponent, we have no theory, just conjectures. Uh, so it may be reasonable to put the closeness of this exponent is a criterion for the inner surface range. If this is not realized, but this is not realized, one may say, oh, this is not genuine inner surface range. In extended self-similarity, what actually forces the third-order exponent to be one, 
and measure the other exponent as a ratio of the third order exponent. Do you like to comment on that? They are so as are made to fit whatever the number may be, but p equal one to three, they are almost perfect. Whatever the number, they give very nice scaling, including some three to one. That means whatever the number, they give very nice scaling. Then. They doesn't, the theory doesn't care about the finite case of the example, is my understanding, sorry. Other questions? Um, uh, you mentioned Steve Orsak. Um, yes. And you he should maybe... What? She passed, he passed you away. Passed away, yes. Yeah. So passed that was uh, 10 days ago. Mm -hmm. I have here the obituary or a draft of obituary. And he died at the age of 68, and this obituary is written by John Bettelfer, and John Bettelfer will be here for three months, coming on 1st of August. So that is, as you mentioned, Orsak's important work of the 70s. Is this supposed to be another talk, I guess? Yes, an informal one. Uh, but up to the audience who wants to <laughs> enter the speaker. So let's thank the speaker again.